So I am very happy to welcome Susan McKeown back to the stage again for another song. Okay, thank you, Susan. I knew it would involve waiting a long, long time. I just didn't realize how long it would be. And patience, I have always known I was put here to learn. I just didn't realize how patient I'd have to be. And that's not to say that I have not been longing. No, I've not been inclined to think myself deserving of the prize. Either that or how strange it would be to have all I wanted. I've had a hard time imagining what good would look like. I heard the old ghosts mumbling over my shoulder. Some of us have demons and some of us are haunted. The words were hard to hear and I remember thinking this doesn't feel good but the truth is what you wanted. I believe we stood there with the future in our arms and then I was no longer waiting. I had come home. You love it like I do. That's why you had to see it through. Just remember what you found was in the space between me and you. Some say it's written in the stars which way our lives will go. I know I like to hold on to a peace of mind so I have some kind of control. But lately I have found an old momentous hope and a blossoming sense of something brightening my soul. These things will run their course and spin out in the universe and they're no longer weighted down for me. It will be what will be and they won't lose their hue. They will reveal themselves and soon and my wish for you is freedom oh that's what i want for you and our next poet comes from the little known Gaeltacht of emmy vale county monaghan uh, katrina ni clairchin was of course for eight years a lecturer in this university she's a formidable scholar, her doctorate was on the a, a, a psychoanalytical study of the poetry in the body of Biddy Jenkinson, who graces us with her presence today, and Nolan Egonel. On Breathe She, her most recent collection, won the um, Michael Hartnett Prize in um, 2015. And just, you know, to pass the time away at the top of a doctorate, she just casually picked up a master's in French literature, where she is um, very influenced by l'écriture féminine. Would you welcome Katrina Niklerchi? Thank you very much for that very kind introduction and thanks for the invitation to read today. I'm going to read two lament poems, uh, one with the translation and the other without. Uh, the first poem is called Felicon Bon. I wrote Felicon Bon um, translated by Michal O'Hay here, um, in memory of my late mother. The white butterfly can be seen as the eternal soul of a loved one who has just passed away. Felicon Bon. Chili Felicon Bon, o the veil on log or egg to, is a davra boon, a drum hoon, a tatu o hin. Er fawn in ashling hiri, schmetterling er echi imma, jalon no papillon blanc, mariposa, memento mori, pilacon. Pilacon persifni maravanish, 
nach an die nisch ach er gille is etrema tu imi as sir cecil ella it de filecon solish clerk lu no kelletrum bono gemas na lily no mage kunish glor sagerch kletchernock brahl sokrige cray scamel trin grain Prinkum agus etchel on ela coin, mion kraha skiahan, jiver emrak hollis on trinona, me nasul bui, sakri tev on ui. Imi an felicon bon is jach sinach a road the gorum rusk, is ji a devlesk, fwin old or is a near a rish o the veil, imoner nemringlo ji. Oxenition Tashrakon. <laughs> now for the translation kindly provided by Mihal O'Hay. A white butterfly escaped your mouth. The day you died, it fluttered forth. A timeless dream, an everlasting sleep. Wandering ever since, soft winged smetterling, you are my wisp like papillon, my mariposa and memento mori, my eternal butterfly dream. You are the Persephone's butterfly that vanished, and all that is left is air. A bright butterfly, light as disappearance, the freedom of the other realm. Did you exchange yourself for someone else? A fresh veneer of yourself. Are you a bon oak amongst the lilies? Did I hear you flutter in a silent moment, or a priest's words, in the heavy funereal silence? I hear the heft of earth, the sun breaking through. Are you still aside the grave in the quiet flicker of butterflies' wings or the furtive half-light of July's yellow butter heart? The day you died, a white butterfly fluttered free across the eternal meadow. It flew into the shell of yourself, disappeared beneath the golden hair of your dreaming. It became as one with your everlasting blue. Um, just greet Noe me. I say, inspired by a passage in Moorish Old Suluan's Feha Blaining Foss about the white butterfly um, traveling in and out of the horse's skull for that one. Um, another lament poem, a love poem, uh, that I'll just finish up on just um, is about an afternoon that can never be uh, revisited. Tranona. Lian na lanon la kela Tranona sauri na daluga taringha. Dunin she the mock on seal. Lian na lanon la kela Tranona sauri. Ak lukan on grain a sta trij na daluga. Teva mui ta chiha agas ayana. No Gorson is on sale more. Agus Tevis G. Top Brothel, Agus Brawlini. Lean, a lanon, la kela, tronona. Ak fuikian ura clig, imoe she. Agus, imoe on shin she. Tagan she is imian she in a glushton. Eg fara mock a ninyog do. Cunyan she eg fanach de gandorase. Tamil, no mage gyar. Susan Styra Low and Shin, Gununter Nandaloga, Lean the Lanon, Fui Cluv on Gra, Shasen the Lanon, Sake Alcadon, La Kila Fui Hitchem on Asa, Nian She, a Kudj Gruiga D, Nian She, a Pogan She Erviola E, Augustan Tishke Che Ictichem Eragraken, Trimian She. A good gruiga fui gi letrak is imian she shias styra a mock and doris. Kivnian she er a grim, er a guli, er vaca vinil. Eg dolla mock and doris though, stoppin she is on shin, imian she, imian she. Fog in the lanon and trinona, says Shomra Lee in a nye good joe, grimil makov.
About uh, five or six years ago, I went out to the, visit my father out in Finglas, and he said to me, oh, you have a rival now. There's a great new poet here in Finglas, temperamental miscellaneous. And everywhere I went around Finglas, people spoke to me of this amazing new poet. Um, so I knew enough to go into YouTube, and there I found her. And Elaine has made a significant presence on YouTube as are many of the young, younger, more performative-oriented poets. Elaine has just finished her first year in the National College of Art and Design, and you can see some of her project work down at the back. Um, so it's my great pleasure to welcome Elaine Harrington, the wordsmith, in her persona of temperamental miscellaneous. I'm Elaine Harrington, temperamental miscellaneous. Fakes and manners. Raised on an unsteady diet of white bread, aluminium poisoning, petty theft misdemeanors, ad infinitum, petrol siphoning. Disguise our integrity, postpone passion to other children, polyfill it for the cracks in our souls, duplo Lego block building. Sucking solvents, our preteen pacifiers, self made magician, petrol from blue to yellow. Take the long way home to a small war, all the same a war zone. Too angry to choke on hello. Not knowing that cuts don't always have to go septic. Abnormalities parallel to functioning when calm is hectic. Not hungering for danger, cause we didn't know safety. Just hungry, escape through a school tie to hang and not chafe me. I'm a chess piece on a draft board, wearing no mask. Why I feel like a stranger. Blondie dolly cereal, bowl cigarette, but passive smoke to fill your head's chamber. We believe in never, we trust in. Don't always say always, we're the common good Realists, our footsteps fade in school hallways. Fundamental knowledge of energy, the symptom is folded arms. Potential faucet torn to empty, clockwise rotation, open palms. Dodge bench warrants and guard spiritual awakenings like bags under scrotum. Ah, can't fully feel alive unless your heart's racing. Is living easy if living is coping? We crowbar our own minds ajar. The young know that God neither man nor woman be. Assembling pencil blades for our own faces to scar. Disfigure and barb wire myself lest you approach me. Pluck petals and count the gears left. I can't enjoy my sherbet jigsaw memories because I'm worried to death. In conjunction with hanging fearlessness on the shelves, in order to function with the fairies and elves and far fathom force falses and fallacies of ourselves over the rainbow and beyond the wishing wells. If you break it, you buy it, anything sells if the tattle tale tells. Tales of fictions for factions to rouse an infraction of the remnants of PVC peace of mind from which stemmed fake satisfaction. High status starts with nursery rhymes, literary spellings and times tables. Basically low rank courtesy binds, having no digestive tract to swallow fables. An attitude of God repaying me in mercy, try to disallow, but my gratitude enables my efforts to be tied to their indifference like cable ties, cutting wrists, lies instigate, hence cupping fists. Try not to hate us, end up respecting us out with fear. We are those children, minus the poison, minus the gear. Keep out of the reach of infants still for the danger of suffocations prominent. You're 14 and among 40 year olds haven't gone through all you've went. In this array and in danger, no crib for a bed. Woodworm cut sleeping upright in buggies instead. Matured fears of adult caught debt parade our heads. Father pushing pram, imitate Goliath wielding steads. Downward looking canine, galaxies not in our vision plane. Chin to concrete dragon seeking look that true pennies is feigned. The sky is our god, is seeing believing well. We trust it yet cannot touch. Truest faithful of Fido's are we heretics. We want it all, but don't ask for much. The same juvenescence imagery scribed on a female brain, though we couldn't have conceived the tooth fairy the same. The same era projected, reflected in a different retina. Calculating milk teeds worth a trope for box to settle it. All a haze pocket money on ticks got free by a whisker. Forecast on sunny days, running one phrase from the mouth of your sister. Dogs chasing cars, tireless bike wheels igniting a spark. Our only shooting stars. Timeless light years light in the dark smoking butts out the ashtray no need to keep sketch egged on to be wild ones lucky redhead age six placing bets ah unlucky uncles that were grimaces and greed in their hearts born nemesis like her buncles would score a screed then depart mm. Clever little boys, one, two, true blue. Stamping feet, ball and fist, morphing a baby face askew. Sorry I ever grew. I worried I never threw more shapes at tantrums. Was too wide of either to do, thinking dipsos were champions. Class clown in the adult school, down the shamrock pub doing sums. Estimating toilet trips, Guinness froth, sucking thumbs. An open book to read others. Street sus, chin tucked, reading paths. Brothers drawing weed plants. Thought it caramel what was brown being cooked. Force words of course, learn from the mouth of a nurse. Verbal flowers in a hearse. A squandered youth could be worse.
It's my great pleasure to introduce again one of the students who took part in the Open Access uh, Workshop here, Chiamaki, Chiamaka Enyi Amadi. Uh, Chiamaka came here 10 years ago from Nigeria and she lived down in Galway uh, up to about five years ago when she moved to County Wicklow, the beautiful Garden County. And um, she's here and she's just completed her first year um, as an undergraduate here in the university. And I'm delighted to introduce her beautiful poetry to you today. Okay, Chiamaka, please. Uh, I'm so glad to be here in this wonderful event. And thank you, Paula, for inviting me. Um, there was a lot of talk of like age and 30 years ago in history. And my poem has, is inspired by history. But a little bit, it was actually written last summer while I was sitting the leaving cert. And I started to think about stories and how powerful stories are. And how they, they are a special kind of history themselves because stories, they kind of, they dictate how we treat people sometimes in the way that they portray certain individuals in society. And it is, it's known that history is always favorable to the people that write it. So I kind of wrote this story in four parts to show that stories can do a lot because they tell the world how people should be treated and how much people are worth. And sometimes that could be favorable, and sometimes that could be quite damaging. So this is called Women and Other Flowers. The story begins with worth. This body and its dark petals. What does it mean to love your neighbor as you love yourself? When your beauty is stolen from your skin and your hair and the name your mother gave you when she took you from the wet hands of the midwife, pale as you were, your eyes were still darker than the color of some baked mud after the raining season. And she knitted her Africa into your name, tighter than the way God knitted it into your jungle hair and safari skin. And now, you cannot look yourself in the eye. You write yourself love notes in Morse code. Each indent is a question. Why faces with skin the color of burnt caramel never grace the crystal ball? Why love is a word said only with your back to the mirror? And why there is so much sting in the silent bleed at the end of each question? Two, what does it mean to love your neighbor as you love yourself? When images of tendrils and test tubes are thrown into your living room and they tell you, each cell must be stripped from its host for, for security purposes. There is much talk of contamination, but then you read somewhere else, somewhere, a much smaller, more transparent screen that it was babies, not tendrils on your flat screen, in incubators, and those bits of charred, charred green flesh on glass-covered floors are bodies, are babies, are bloodied, over exposed flesh peeling in eastern heat, not strong enough for the outside world, not strong enough for the once crisp hospital air, not strong enough for even their mother's touch, but it's been weeks and all. There is only rot and dust now. Tendrils or not, it is as good a reason to break from the ritual. Midnight meteor rounds, the daily staring contest with the mobile abyss, and mourn as best you can. They were no family of yours. So you were more not the loss of shared memories, but the injustice. With no thought of politics or other man-made things, simply that they were not given the chance to grow into an ally or enemy, nipped at the tender bud of terror. They would never be old enough to feel like victims or victors, to feel ostracized or socially submerged, to feel like they can be both Arab and Muslim without being a threat to Western society to feel the warmth of flesh, not metal thorns, to feel without pain. Three, what does it mean to love your neighbor as you love yourself? If every sunrise doesn't come sinking, you can get out of bed today, because maybe you shouldn't, since each morning is a constant visceral assault of mortality, and you blend into the night, and lullabies ring out like elegies or sirens, because maybe you won't make it. 
through the night or past that checkpoint if you're caught out howling your fear and pride at the moon. And there is death and danger in the face of everything that moves at you and breathes deep and heavy so that there is no air left for your heaving lungs. Four, what does it mean to love your neighbor as you love yourself? Is it a slow blossoming like a delayed blessing? Or is it to become an injury, a hurt, like the gaping ground of an expanding fault line? Settle into devastation, christen your soul victim, or try to be whole again. Thank you. There's two more students now. Um, firstly, Eamon McGuinness, who's already beginning to make a name for himself. I see his work in the, what we call the little magazines, the, the journals and um, periodicals where many poets make their first publications. So crucial to the literary culture. And I hear him in podcasts, and I see his name on shortlists for prizes. It's great to welcome Eamon McGuinness. Please join me. Thanks for the introduction, Paula. Um, thanks for having me. It's a great, great event to be asked to with such amazing writers. So thanks for having me. Um, this poem was, I'm just going to read two poems. Um, this poem was inspired by a, a newspaper article I read. Um, which basically it was talking about migrants who would move to London and when they were maybe, you know, in their, when they were quite young and they learned English as a second language and then as they got older, some of them developed Alzheimer's and they began forgetting their English and they started speaking back in their native tongue. So it just sort of played with that and then it turned into a, a love poem. So um, it's called Before You Spoke a Word. In our apartment in Granada, you slept beside me while I watched the documentary on Ignacio Sanchez Mejias. I heard it said that Lorca saved him from his second death, being forgotten. But maybe there's another, sorry, but maybe there's a third, another in between, that loss of language, knowledge and sense between you and me. If that happens in 40 or 50 years, I'll be there beside you when your words start to retract, shrink and disappear. And it'll feel like we're slowly burning a book page by page, day by day, with all your cultural references, defences and safeguards stripped and falling away like old paint, everything you've built up lost like possessions in a fire. Like the senile West Caribbeans in London, the Polish in Dublin, stray Latvians in Rush or Brazilians in Kinnegad, from Terror Hamlets via Fuente Vaqueros to Nookrove Avenue and back again, perhaps you'll return to the place names of your youth, Athanui, Monson, Aline's La Plaza, La Roca y el Pilaret, and you'll have forgotten all the names it took you so long to pronounce correctly. Rathfarnham, Terenure, Dun Leary, Port Marnock, Drumcondra, and Ballyvaughan, like a singer losing their voice. But I'll know I heard Philip Chevron sing Thousands Are Sailing, and Jim McCann sing From Clare to Here, and I'll know I watched your vocabulary expand and strengthen like a developing child's. But if it happens, that you can't remember your name, and you go back in your mind to the time before I met you, before 2009, before you knew what bottling it or legging it meant, or earlier, before English, before you spoke a word, like poor blonde next door who forgot she gave up smoking and started again. If you can't remember who I am, and you don't know where you are, and you start calling out to your grandparents, it's then, and only then, that I'll start speaking to you in Spanish, in broken Spanish, and I'll try to get to know you for the second time all over again. Cheers. Um, yeah, this is a little short poem. I wrote this for my little brother, Bobby, who's in, a, who's in New Zealand. Um, he, him and his girlfriend, they're expecting a child, and uh, he sort of freaked out. And he, um, he yeah, I was, ch yeah, I, yeah, and I, um, yeah, so I chatted to him on the phone, and uh, so I wrote this after talking to him. It's called Given Ground. Find something that pushes against its given ground, the space it's been born into, something that rises and flies on its own, 
that challenges the earth in soft bursts. Something to look after that will lift you, sustain you through night feeds and unwashed cold faced days. Something that moves you, cleans you and kicks you clear of yourself. Uh, Emma Tobin, like Chiamaka, has just completed her first year here, her first year of studies in, I believe, English philosophy and history. And she already has a, quite a publishing um, list to her name. She's won many prizes, uh, including being joint winner of the Hennessy Award. Um, she's uh, published in many places, and her name is, is getting about. And um, she was a fantastic presence in my workshop. I'm delighted to welcome her to the stage. Emma Tobin, please. Uh, this poem won the Trocra Poetry Award in the Senior Post Primary Category in 2015. The Sins of the Children. The mute, mothball shrieks of children dying under mother's hands. And the fractal bursts of fractured light that hit as the world tumbles over itself, leaving vague moments like fingernails between stones. While we, like disapproving books on dusty shelves, clasp coffee cups against the precious beating of our hearts, toss cynicism between one another, each drop of sweat a privilege, each breath a human right. Stuffed straw mouths and shining hair, religious freedom weighs more than dead children, leaving corpses littered like cigarettes, Colours in a twisted dream of heaven. Matchstick ribs jutting, but we stood on the moon. How fragile we have made our one short and common life. How easily our complacency is bought. And in the dull light of big moon skies, ragged lines of blood stutter down rough touches underneath a fluorescent fire. Severed heads belching, toddlers left for flies. In empty houses, seashells wait for pudgy fingers now bludgeoned shades of navy blue. And our tots writhe on the warehouse floor, unable to comprehend a world without Lego. These shells will not creak in a gruff wind, stretched, lopsided over an imagined territory, an imagined safety, an imagined tender world. This is called The Holy Ghosts. I have made a monastery in my bed, woven quiet from strands of hair, soft gargoyle stalactites in my great mouth, the yawn of balmy breath beneath sheets. There I dash my brains against patterns, gray matter daub stories play, serrated teeth on stones. No winners in this zoo of Cartesian doubt, Centaurs gallop the perimeter. Mouths close and groan and echo. Sams chase prayers. Here there is a constant drought. Thirst so ravenous it sends man-made monsters grinning. Clandestine teeth. I am made of sandpaper. Raw and scabbed and healing. Visitors people these corridors waving badges, credentials. The ghosts skirt them greedily. They've eaten all they can of me. Down to stringy muscle and masquerading calcium. They have stolen my breasts and my children. Monastery. A holy, unholy place. Restless stones shook my footsteps, gone rabid in the quiet. The haze of hair and hunger. And the monsters are bored. They sulk and scuffle in unplanted soil. They are my harvest, my children. Barren girl, I made them this way, insatiable, eating everything, cherishing nothing. I must let them starve in these cold corridors. I must change the sheets. Soon the agony of sunrise will bleed them dry, and I will build something better next time.
This last one is called Arsonist. I know a girl with Molotov cocktails for eyes. When she looks at you, you drown in petrol. She can't see the people are not cars. She is always going places. Entire service stations drop like flies, scarecrows in untilled fields. She pays ghosts in dollars for tampons she can't use. There are no children hiding within her, pressing tiny palms against her ribs like prayers. They gurgle their thanks and drift like confetti, human glitter. It makes her sad that ghosts clutch currency and see through palms like it might save them. She was built for wartime, built for starvation and gasoline and foreign palms in strange places. I know a girl with charcoal lips, a burning smile. Her kisses chase vomit, cannot help but be foul. She rescues you from cherry cola and M&Ms, their spent chocolate shells, upturned debris and mustard gas colored bile, a syrup for pipes to gargle. Do you still find her pretty? Crouched over toilet bowls, scrubbing away some conjured stain. She thinks you're desperately cute. The world's a camera throttling her for the perfect pose. Charcoal girl whose mother never taught her not to burn down the world. I planted bombs in my uterus to make me more of a woman. We all know a girl who accidentally learned how to die. She struts with untied shoelaces and incendiaries cached in important places. She made bathrooms her church and thinks God's hiding somewhere in her stomach. I kissed a girl with Stalingrad eyes and lips like ashes. I kissed a girl and lost her to some quiet and internal war with pitched battles between meals. I kissed her, I lost her. She left burns instead of memories. She never understood longevity. Left me like some capitalist ghost clutching our children's bones. <laughs>